Hello and welcome to this quick video on SolidWorks routing, adding tags or labels. My name is Robert French, I'm an applications engineer at Go Engineer, and you see my email there as well if you guys have any questions about this or anything else Go Engineer does. So let's talk about you know using SolidWorks routing and how we can use it to kind of add these simple tags and labels and what are the different steps, different concepts, different tools that we need to keep in mind during this. Well first and foremost if you're familiar with routing you know we have the routing library manager which is what we use to kind of create these different route components, different wire sizes, just a, a library of organization for our different uh, routing components, whether it's electrical, tubing, or piping. We're also going to go over flat pattern options, right? These adding adding of tags and labels, eventually we want to see that kind of manifested or, or represented on the drawing. And usually on a drawing we're doing a flat pattern, so what options in the flat pattern creation do we have to be aware of in order to facilitate this process? And then lastly, we'll do a little bit of modification of that flat pattern just to make sure that it, once again, is, is nice and clear and, and ready to put on a drawing. So let's jump in and find the routing library manager first. So I'll start my start menu and scroll down to SolidWorks and SolidWorks tools and your version number, wh whatever year it might be. And then we have the uh, routing library manager right here. So when I activate that, we have a whole swath of options in here. I'm not going to go into detail. We do have several other videos that kind of go over routing in general. What we're interested in right now is this routing component wizard in the top left, because we're going to use that to create a new component, which is our tags. You know, these just these simple letter tags. Uh, I had a request from a customer not too long ago that was interested in this topic, hence I'm making the video. So we're doing an electrical type part, and before we get started on this process, we actually need to jump into SolidWorks and have open that component that we want to turn into a, a routing component. So I have this kind of simple little uh, tag uh, part here. This is my simple kind of what I would call blank tag. You'll, you'll notice that I have several different configurations. I have a flagged tag where I kind of have this extra little, you know, uh, piece of paper, a little flap of, of, of you know, material that I could uh, put a letter on. And I also have the letter tag, which is just kind of a simpler version of that, but still with a letter on it. So now that I have this part open and I have some of the um, important uh, routing uh, uh, geometry created, like axes and different uh, routing points, you can see those R points and stuff in there. It's because I already made this a routing component, uh, but what we would do in here is have the part file open in the background. This is an electrical part for us. This is just simply a clip. And this wizard is pretty straightforward. Like I said, we have several other videos kind of covering this. Um, we simply go through, add the additional points, choose different configurations, fill in things like description, how it's handled on the bill of material. Right, this is actually a, one of the better modules of SolidWorks that really walks you through the steps, kind of explains what each what each component or what each uh, reference geometry is doing for you. So once that's all done and created, what we end up with <coughs> back here in uh, SolidWorks, let's just close out of this guy, is when I look over in my design library on the side and I chose the electrical folder, obviously, because we're working in electrical routing. I have this normal tag file right here in my library, ready to operate as a routing component. So I'll close out of this guy and open up the assembly that I'm trying to throw this tag into. So here's my very simple, uh, obviously, I'm a, a, an electrical, uh, an EE, obviously, right now. I'm actually a mechanical engineer. This is just kind of a simple little mock-up I did, uh, but the concept works no matter what, no matter, you know, if, if the route makes a, a lot of sense or not. I, I'm just kind of doing some kind of USB to LED connector for some reason, who knows. But let's go ahead and, and throw a tag on here, right? It would be no different than adding a tag on, on the most complicated uh, and, and sophisticated routes in the world, so... I'll jump into editing the route, which is essentially just like a spline, right? Kind of a, a relaxed spline that connects these two existing components that both have C points, connector points on them. So now I'll open up my library and I can click and drag in my tag component. Ooh, and let's actually zoom in a little closer so we can see what's going on. You'll notice when I click and drag it right over my path line, it kind of snaps to it. That's really the, the function of those different R points in there, just orienting, using that, that geometry, that construction geometry in order to position itself. So I snap it on there. You'll see I have an option here for selecting my configuration, which is great. I, I could see this being organized a number of different ways. If you're using the same set of letters every time, maybe make a different part file for each letter, maybe make a different configuration 
all within one part my file make a different configuration for every letter you know there's a, a number of different ways we could organize this let's go with a flagged tag for now just because it has a little bit more uh, flavor to it than just a round cylinder all right so once that's placed on there we're pretty good pretty much good to go here um, got, got the tag on here and represented you know we can take it to a bill of material now so let's do that let's take it to the drawing so here's the flat and route option. This is typically what we're using when we're ready to go to a drawing. When I activate that, there's a number of different options in here. Once again, other videos cover this more in depth. The thing that I'm really curious about, or, or really interested in, I should say, is this flatten clips option down here. This is created as a clip type of uh, routing component. So in order to have it exist in the flat pattern, I need to choose this option. Now, if you actually have real clips, you know, I'm kind of using this as a clip file um, representing a tag, but if I did have other clip files I didn't want to represent, you could either suppress them in the configuration you're about to see if they were present, or you'd have to create these tag files as a non-clip, which is totally fine. There's several different types of routing components. Some of them require more geometry, you know, reference geometry than others, but you can break those rules if you know what you're doing, and in this case, all we need on this component is some R points in order to place it on the route, and other than that, we can kind of fudge the system and, and, and make it do what we want. But if you are doing it as a clip, you're going to need that flatten clip option checked here in the property manager. All right, once you do that, it comes out halfway decent, but we're not quite there yet, right? This guy kind of just arbitrarily rotates to a unique orientation. Let's fix that. So. We're actually in a different configuration when we're in a flat route. If we jump over to our configurations tab, we can clearly see that. And none of this stuff is locked down. You can see we have no active mates going right now. So typically with a flat pattern, you just leave it as is. Don't move anything. You're good to go. Throw it on the drawing. But here you'll notice I can actually reorient and move stuff around. And I want to do that in this case because I need this A to be facing upwards, right? Like someone could actually see it. So, uh... Now I moved it, though, and by changing its orientation, I moved it off my wire. So let's move it back. So if I try to mate them back together, uh-oh, nothing's locked down, everything moves. So one quick thing I do is just fix this wire component or any other components that I know can't change. Now I can mate this guy reoriented. I could make, you know, this front face or some of these other flat faces parallel to other existing planes to really orient it nice and true, lock it down, get it exactly where I want it. And now I'm ready to take this guy onto a drawing. Once again, remember, this is a different configuration. So you can kind of mess with it um, with a lot of confidence that you're not actually changing that configuration that is your actual 3D uh, routed wire. I'll jump this guy on here, scales off a little bit. Let's go five to one, it might not fit. Ooh, 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 we want to do that to the original here though. Let's go custom scale, five to one. It might not fit on the screen. We'd obviously chop this up with some section views and stuff like that, reattach our leader lines. But now here we see this this kind of tag that, you know, this dummy tag that we created uh, represented on a drawing. So that was it on a quick uh, kind of example of, of some different routing components and different ways you can use the software. Uh, in this case, an effort to create some, uh, some simple tags, right? Uh, cool. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.